For Midnight, we slap on this additional layer of selective disclosure, yeah. where users of this chain can selectively disclose details about their transactions for compliance reasons, which is which is very important for a privacy chain. The launch team wishes you good luck and Godspeed. <laughs> Space Monkeys, blasting off with Justin Freevert. He is a developer on the Cardano Midnight's project. It's a substrate-based partner chain connected to Cardano, and we're really lucky to have him with us. Justin, welcome to Space Monkeys. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. It was very interesting to see your talk on stage. Partner chains, I've been hearing about them on Twitter, but I don't quite understand the, the concept yet. Are all partner chains built on substrate? Uh, yes. Okay, um, okay. There isn't really a strict requirement that they are built on substrate. Yeah. Um, but practically speaking, um, the node, the example node that partner chains are intended to use to bootstrap their project uh, is based off of substrate. There's not really a practical way to go any other direction. So, gotcha. For all intents and purposes, yes. Um, okay, they must be built on substrate. Well, why don't we talk about what you were doing just before you started working on the Midnight Project, and um, when you started hearing about this idea of of substrate interacting with with Cardano? What mm -hmm. were you up to? I had been working at a project called Futureverse, and they were a metaverse project. Okay. Um, also built on substrate. When did you first hear about the partner chains? I had first heard about partner chains um, after seeing a job description <laughs> on IOG's website that yeah. described partner chains. And funny enough, not long after that, like totally coincidentally, a recruiter also from IOG reached out um, huh. and asked if I'd be interested in working on this project. It was kind of surprising when they announced that they're going to be using Substrate a little bit. What do you think the, uh, the impetus, the reason uh, why uh, they decided to start funding development of these partner chains. There's likely an interest to bring more utility to the Cardano ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And th this is a great way to achieve utility by connecting these, these other chains, which can be um, spun up rather quickly, relatively speaking, and feature their unique runtimes, uh, which can provide unique experiences to the ecosystem, is a no-brainer for providing utility. The Cardano architecture, just by itself, it's kind of like a monolithic chain, basically, right? Or is is it sharded? Because what I'm trying to understand is like these partner chains are like they're basically like Cardano rollups, in a way. Not quite. Okay, tell me about it. Yeah, yeah. So it might be convenient to try to reach for a rollup like architecture to describe these, but um, they actually don't quite sit in that definition. Um, they're closer to a side chain. Oh. Um, so they don't roll anything up to Cardano. Like there's no state or transactions that they're trying to aggregate or represent in some way on Cardano. Okay. Yeah. They're they're more about sharing security of existing validators on Cardano. I see. Um, and that's useful for these chains because it's simpler for them to bootstrap uh, with existing validators than bootstrapping their own validators. Sure. And Cardano has a lot of economic security. Of course. Um, so. Yeah, it's interesting that it creates this uh, symbiotic relationship between the, the chains. Okay, so it's a side chain. Can you dig in a little bit to how that shared security works in this model? To start at the beginning of the, the origin of this relationship between a, any Cardano main chain, where a main chain could be a testnet, for example, or it could be Cardano proper, there exists on that chain some contract that's meant to manage this idea of one or more partner chains okay. and also the validators who would serve to validate for those partner chains. So this initialization action is performed to instantiate a new partner chain and those validators register in some sense to validate for a given partner chain. Hmm. Now to talk about how things play out on the partner chain side, yeah. the, uh, the part partner chain nodes will spin up for a given partner chain network. And those nodes know how to retrieve some stake distribution data from Cardano. Okay. And this information informs validator set selection um, for the partner chain. Hmm. So some amount of stake is distributed in particular ways towards different uh, 
types of validators. In this case, they're called SPOs on Cardano. Based on that proportion of stake distribution, these partner chain nodes on the substrate side, uh, they'll retrieve that information and they'll send a number of pieces of information through their block headers. These pieces of information should more or less match. These provide the critical pieces of information that the chain needs to, to function as a partner chain. Is there any shared state between Cardano and the partner chain? Like, how, what, how, what's the interoperability level? In the current implementation, no. Right. Uh, they just, they just uh, pull those uh, critically tiny pieces of information yeah. from the validator set and also a hash of the main chain Cardano state. Huh. But beyond that, there's not much. Um, I think there are likely plans for more uh, pieces of information to, to come over. Sure. Uh, like in the future, uh, we might be interested in having things like governance managed on Cardano and having um, governance information in a general sense bridged over to any given partner chain. Okay, so it's going to be a bridge situation. Yeah, at that point, I think it's more it's closer to bridging. Very cool. So let's talk about the mandate of Midnight. So this is the first partner chain. Wait, are there any other partner chains under development right now or not really? I'm not aware of any. You're trailblazing so I, it. I think it's likely just us for now. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, what's Midnight? Uh, what's the purpose of Midnight? Well, Midnight is meant to fill a missing slot for data protection. Okay. Um, here, data protection means something similar to privacy in other privacy preserving blockchains. Though uh, for Midnight, we slap on this additional layer of um, selective disclosure, yeah. where uh, users of this chain can selectively disclose details about their transactions uh, for compliance reasons, which is, which is very important for a privacy chain. Yeah, it's not a total black box. If I do a private transfer and somebody comes knocking on my door wanting to know what's up, I can hand over a key and then they can see what happened, right? Yeah, certain entities might be interested in Right, of course. And this is important to keep the developers out of jail, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. in I mean, simple terms, yeah. Yeah, like basically. Yeah, yeah. So how is this achieved? Uh, let, let's go. Let's go. Not from the technical side, but how is this achieved um, from a user's point of view? What would their experience using Midnight uh, look like? Yeah. Uh, so a typical user um, in the current state is fairly limited to um, performing some primitive transfers of of assets. Okay. Um, and with a privacy-based chain. Uh, there's not much information to look at when you do that. You can transfer to other people, but you can't uh, see much about the balance. But uh, the other the other important persona here are developers. Um, um, and developers interact with our chain through writing dApps, uh, data-protected apps. That's okay. kind of the, the terminology that we're using. Ah. And so the, you know, at, the, at the current state, um, developers find our documentation and they're able to... Um, download a number of dependencies, including um, our custom language, which is called Compact, hmm. and write a program where that in that language Compact, which is meant to feel somewhat like TypeScript in a sense. Okay. And then they can talk to our testnet now. So they can they can write a contract, they can generate proofs for that contract, and the way that the system works is all they need to do is uh, send these proofs. Uh, with some transaction data to our chain. Hmm. Um, and the way our pallet works is it verifies those transactions under the hood, verifying some ZK proofs and performing some other state transitions. Um, and that uh, will complete the state transition for their given the given contract call that they made. It's like a custom smart, smart contracts platform, but all the smart contracts are private. Yeah, yeah. So the relationships are a bit different there because okay, of the tell policy. Me, yeah. Our contracts give developers a bit of an expanded dominion over the state that they're able to operate on. Okay. Um, so developers are able to uh, prove properties about an off-chain state uh, in addition to the normal on-chain state that they're able to reason about. And okay. they can kind of interoperate between those or send pieces back together, write any constraints about how um, the program might do so. But yeah, uh, uh, given that we have this off-chain state, it's meant to be kept private. Okay. Um, so uh, this isn't meant to be deployed in a sense where like a proving service mm. uh, that you might find in other ecosystems for like a ZK rollup, uh, you wouldn't want to deploy it in that way. Um, you would want to have some off-chain state that's local to the deployment 
Um, so that could be like local to a web browser that's running a, a D app, or um, if there's a server that's running a D app and keep the state there. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, you wouldn't want somebody else who, uh, to prove something about your state because they would have access to all your private stuff to your D app. Okay, so the developer has set up an app and the app has a private off-chain state. What's happening here is you're using uh, zero knowledge to prove things about that state without revealing what the state is. Is this correct? Yeah, that's right. So in this example, some developer has developed their application in a way where they have some private state. Maybe it's deployed on the ser server and their DAP is local to that server or it's on some machine, like a local developer machine. This developer would have likely written a, a compact smart contract where that contract basically just reasons about that state. Hmm. Like we can, we can talk, we can say it works in any way. Like we can say that like some tokens that are, that are set in that state are above some value or something like this. And they can, they can prove this hmm. um, without revealing what it is. And that's, that's just kind of using the properties that are given by ZK in this, in this very private example. Cool. Yeah. So you, where do you work in this whole, what part of the tech stack are you working on? I work on the node. We build the node, which is a substrate based node. Yeah. And we kind of import these other components that implement a lot of what I just said in wholesale in a sense. Like for example, there's one component that we call the ledger and the ledger is responsible for specifying this protocol. Um, that allows for um, these data protected asset transactions and uh, similar for contract transactions. And we just import that thing and we stick it into a part of our node. Um, and that's, that's basically it. That's the end. That's the whole show. And the rest of our development work is our various bits and pieces that we need to work on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The way it works is we have a typical Wasm based runtime and we have one custom palette that's responsible for all of these ledger interactions. Basically what that means for us is it's responsible for receiving uh, the ledger transactions. Yeah. Um, that's every type of transaction, assets, contracts, et cetera. And it sends it down to a native module, uh, which wraps this ledger component. Inside that native uh, side, it just performs all the verification, uh, the, the ZK verifications to be specific, Hmm. Um, takes any information related to the transaction and then it performs some state transitions before returning the state back. And then we just keep the state on chain. Yeah. Simple. It's simple to talk about it this way, but, <laughs> but you could like explore it in any direction and find so much complexity. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is your life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Does this retain uh, features of like um, being able to upgrade the chain? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it does. And it's, it's pretty interesting that you say that because um, we have some interesting requirements around upgrading the chain. Sure. We basically want to support a hard fork like process for Midnight specifically. Okay. Um, where for us, that means that we're interested in tracking adoption of a new version of the Midnight client hmm. block by block. Um, once we receive a, an amount that surpasses a configurable threshold, then we, we say, okay, we want to accept this, run, this upgrade and we'll try to attempt a runtime upgrade. Is there a governance feature here or who pulls the trigger on this? Um, we're still designing governance, to be honest. So okay. this is in testnet. Mm -hmm. We just have pseudo governance for now. Yeah, of course. It's kind of, I mean, it's fair for testnet, but we have ideas for implementing governance. Like, we might be interested in uh, designing some governance that can uh, originate in Cardano and come down to midnight. Ah, oh, um, interesting. Yeah, or something else. Okay. Yeah, still very early. How big is the team working on Midnight? Uh, it's fairly big. Uh, we're living under IOG for now, and we'll spin out to our own team. Wow. Um, it's upwards of 50, but I don't know. No way. I'm pretty sure. So there's a, there's a vision here. This is, this is an important project. I, I think there's a lot of interest uh, in this ecosystem to get Midnight up and running. Um, and a lot of interest in partner chains as like an evolution for Cardano. Any, any sense of kind of what the future looks like? For midnight? For midnight, yeah. So we have a few ideas which I can talk about in terms of specific features. Sure. We're interested in some, 
idea of contract state recursion. Any circuit of a proof system that's able to support this notion of, of recursion is okay. able to take another proof that was generated with the same proof system and verify it within its own circuit uh, when it performs its proving. Okay. So this is something that's used for rollups when they try to aggregate uh, the state of a blockchain over time. For us, it might be interesting for a number of use cases. Uh, like it, there might be interesting use cases where contracts are able to interoperate in an interesting way because they're able to take the proof generated from another contract circuit and uh, integrate it into their own circuit. Mm -hmm. And they're able to reason about the correctness of that circuit state, but they don't necessarily know all the details of that state. Great. Um, and at some level, we're interested in introducing this to the entire state of our chain. Um, so not only like proof recursion for contracts, but we would want to prove the state of midnight from Genesis to head. Um, see. And yeah, output, yeah. yeah, and output a, a small constant size proof. And somebody else who is in a decentralized environment and has access to a compatible verifier would be able to take that proof and instantly be convinced uh, that the state of midnight is correct. Sounds important for bridging. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, bridging is like a very obvious uh, place to use this. And in fact, uh, talking about the future state of midnight, one thing that we're interested in is introducing a zk-based bridge at some point. Of course, this is very important because otherwise you can have to build a whole ecosystem just in the isolated midnight chain, basically, right? But once you bridge. Now you can have some action from yeah, outside. Yeah. yeah, now we can actually talk with uh, the rest of the ecosystem. Yeah, it's very interesting stuff. Any plans to bridge over to Polkadot? Or do you think there'd be any useful synergies there? I don't know any plans for bridging anywhere in specific. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's very early uh, yeah, right. for, that, uh, for that set of features. So I don't really know. But any ecosystem who wants some data protecting features could would benefit from this. Yeah, exactly. They could, they could make use of... Uh, any state on our chain which has made use of data protection, yeah. um, and they could inherit some some data, some privacy in in, in that cool. way. All right, final question: uh, Why do you think that Substrate was the right choice to to build a project like Midnight? Uh, some obvious ones: uh, upgradeability, like is very important. Being able to perform forkless upgrades is kind of a no-brainer for any chain or any ecosystem. Hmm. It's also a great solution because there's many frame palettes which are already ready to be used, yeah. um, especially things for things like governance, uh, which Polkadot has a relatively large amount of development around. Yeah. Um, so chains can um, start up way more quick quickly and iterate more quickly on certain features. Cool. Um, and we've done the same. Like uh, we've we've imported a few frame palettes when it was necessary. Kind of starting up a chain, initial development, it, it makes more sense to start with a framework than to start from nothing, mm. where you don't have any of the um, the no-brainer features that you need for a blockchain. The networking, the database, yeah, uh, consensus, all the stuff that Substrate has. You know. Well, look, Justin, thanks very much for coming on the show and expanding our mind on what's going on with Substrate. Sometimes um, we can get a little head down and really focus on Polkadot, but it's so cool to, to see new uh, iterations of what's possible on Substrate outside. So really appreciate you coming on the show. Same here uh, in the other direction. You know, we're not interested in kind of existing in a bubble. Yeah. You know, we're interested in um, contributing back in some ways and being involved in Polkadot's ecosystem as well. Um, it doesn't make sense to have less friends. Love it. Awesome. Bro, thanks for coming on. Thank you.